But before we actually get into the video presentation, I want to remind everyone where nodes have come from. And um, Richie SH, who is uh, one of our glorious content creators in the community, uh, he made a video doing a walkthrough of a Alpha One nodes where the core functionality was present, the expansion, the development, the collection of experience. People saw them grow there. They saw the uh, construction there, um, and they saw some of the interactions that we've detailed. But just take a look visually at where nodes have come from before you're about to see where nodes are now. And you are right. It's 53 minutes. Um, ah. Also, Got Richie him. was on our Q&A <laughs> that we did in April. So if you want to check that out over on our YouTube channel, uh, Stephen answered a lot of great questions over there. And so we can play the video and talk over it as we're watching it. Yeah. Um, and oh, and wow. as, as we're... It's 4K, uh -oh. so it... Uh, we grabbed this earlier today, so... <laughs> So first I gotta say, it's pretty awesome that Intrepid is actively watching Ashes of Creation content creators content and bringing it into the stream like this. This was this was an awesome last minute thing that they did for me as Steven surprised me by having Discord spam me to get my attention to ask to use my Alpha 1 video. So huge shout out to Intrepid for that. This was pretty cool for me, especially when this video is like two years old now and it's kind of been buried in hundreds of other videos. So it's nice to see them pull that one out. But. Let's talk nodes. Ash of the Creation's highly anticipated node update is finally here, and we had to wait through two-ish delays to finally get to this point. So you're probably wondering, did Steven announce Alpha 2? Do we finally have a spot testing date? And did we see any of the Metropolis node? Well, none of that. And after this showcase, it makes me feel that we really have a bit longer to wait than a lot of people were hoping to finally get into Alpha 2. Starting off with the pros of this stream, Intrepid gave us an updated look at the Stage 3 node, otherwise known as the Village Stage. When we last saw this node, well, it was very bland and had just some buildings in a box for players to interact with. And while it did serve basic features, it was very placeholder. This time around though, we really get to see Intrepid's vision come to life. Life, as this Kalar themed node seemed like it popped straight out of the concept art with updated graphics to buildings, multiple levels to it, windy hills, a windmill in the background, and something that really feels like players are setting up shop on a new part of the world and slowly burning it to life. We also got to learn about some new systems such as Mandate, which is a node energy system mayors can use to build and upgrade the node, which is earned through citizen participation in activities such as node wars, caravans, policy votes, and more. We also saw a lot of the mayoral side of things through some placeholder UI, such as how they can obtain resources for constructing a building, how to actually construct the building and upgrade it via talent trees, and how in depth you can actually go into the various taxes within this stage of a node. But for the cons, well, it felt very similar in a way, despite how visually different the nodes look to something we had seen in the past. If you go back to the 4K Alpha 1 video that Steven gave us a while ago, he does something very similar within an Alpha 1 node. He he explores it a bit, showing us around, makes himself mayor, takes us to an empty building spot, and constructs a building while messing around within this village. And while it is nice to compare these two videos side by side to see how far we have actually come since Alpha 1, it really felt more of a way to showcase the art direction than the nodes themselves. We did not see any different node types or even different racial architecture. We actually didn't see nodes level up in any different stages at all. It just sat at the village stage the whole time. There wasn't a lot of talk on different building types and what they can do for players other than scrolling through some UI, no talk on social organization, and no seeing how the node progresses the world beyond the walls of these nodes, mixing up spawn tables, changing roads and bridges, and unlocking different content. There was also really no new details on the four types of nodes. What are their superpowers? How do they perform differently and look differently as they level up? Things like that that I feel like are going to be very important in the long run but weren't mentioned at all. It really just seems that these nodes are still in the very early stages like their last year's cleric showcase compared to the one we saw this last month. They still have plenty of room to grow. There was also no caravans but those were teased for a stream in the next few months and while what Intrepid did show us was great and very exciting to see, it really didn't fill 
that Node 3 void that I was hoping for. Obviously, the Node system is massive and there's so much tied into it that we're not going to get it all in one live stream, but it feels like they still miss the opportunity to share quite a bit as well. Presentation wise, though, it was great. Similar to the Freehold stream, where it started out as a PowerPoint live this time instead of pre recorded. Within these slides, we learn about citizenship and how houses are requirements for citizenship. You can't be a citizen without them. But with that, we also learned of a new housing type not previously mentioned before called inns. These are instanced rooms that you can rent which grant access to limited furniture and storage. But what makes these stand out from the instance apartments is they are most widely available compared to any of the housing. And they can even be found closer to the starting areas of the game to get you a jump start on that citizenship. Beyond that, there are still apartments, static housing, and freeholds that haven't really changed a whole lot. As a citizen of a node, you will pay dues, which in return grant you reduced fees at offerings, access to exclusive vendors, and access to relics a node obtains, along with reduced taxes. But if you want to abandon a node and give up your citizenship, say because you don't like your mayor, you can do so at Town Hall, which will give you a cooldown before you can become a citizen someplace else. But if you lose your citizenship when a node is destroyed, you are granted what is called refugee status, which removes that cooldown. For mayors, how you are elected depends on the node type. For scientific, it's ranked choice popular vote. Also with scientific nodes, well, they were referred to also as academic nodes towards the end of the stream when they were talking about node type specific buildings, but in the slideshow, it's still stated scientific, so we could perhaps be seeing a name change come soon to this. With economic nodes, the mayor is decided through a blind bid auction where the highest bid wins. Divine nodes grant a PVE favor competition, which has whomever gaining the most favor within a certain amount of time winning the mayorship. And for military nodes, it is trial by combat. And this has changed a bit since we last heard of it. Originally, it was basically a free for all and whomever was last standing was the mayor. Now though, it's the same in a way, but those whom are not registered for election can back specific players and fight for those players in this PVP event. There will be some objectives within the node for you to take on and completing these objectives will give you points and whoever has the most points points by the end of the event will gain the mayorship. Mayors have their own node menus they can access showing them three tabs, which is a summary of the node, a treasury, and buildings. We didn't see the summary tab, but we did see the treasury, which has a few different options. Within it, the mayors can create or buy orders to obtain goods for node construction, along with adjusting the taxes of the node. The higher level the node, the more tax options you have, such as setting a global tax rate or being more specific with taxes on amenities, comrades, property, artisanship, and many more or less based on the node type. The other tab in the node window was buildings, which shows all of the buildings you already have obtained within that node, along with the available slots where you can construct new buildings. There is also a map option, which wasn't shown, which Margaret said is going to give you a location of the node buildings and the node slots, so you can pick and choose really where you want to place that building. If a mayor decides to quit the game, well, they're still mayor until the next election, which could drastically impact that node. Some decisions a mayor would normally make are on a timer and will auto select if not chosen while others are not so you really want to make sure that you picked a dedicated mayor benefits of becoming a mayor include a title a unique mount armor, cosmetics, and event abilities. There are also mayoral commissions that the mayor can initiate for players to complete. This rewards the node based on the amount of players that contribute with things such as node rep, mandates, and temp buffs to the buildings and surrounding zones. Players who participate will also receive XP, node rep, node currency, and more. Commissions are something within a node that are unlocked for the node based on the node type, location, and building choices. There are also policies, which we have heard a bit on before, which can also alter node's function, grant buildings and zone buffs, and node-to-node -node reputation. Each node can only slot a certain amount of policies at a time, and they are something that can normally be voted on by the citizens to decide if they want these policies or not, but the mayor does have the power to use up some mandates to bypass the voting requirement. Node buildings also need to be taken care of, which means they will require regular maintenance costs of node commodities and gold from the treasury to function. If maintenance for a building is missed, it will enter a state of disarray, which basically means it is damaged and won't function, requiring players to contribute materials to get it back into operation. When a building is sieged and destroyed, it will sit in a rubbled state for a period of time before the empty plot becomes available again. And the last slide was buy orders, which we had a lot of gameplay
play around as well. Basically, the mayor can initiate these using gold from the treasury to pay these citizens for gathering specific resources, although the citizens gain node currency and not gold when they go to cash in. This is really the biggest part of the gameplay Steven showed as Steven and co gathered some materials, cashed in on the buy order, and then used those materials to craft a smithy, showing us some updates on the building process at a fast forwarded speed to get us a good idea of what it looks like. The smithy even has its own talent tree to it, along with most other building types, which allow you to specialize a path for a specific weapon or armor type, which could help you make your node more desirable as people will be seeking out those high-end crafting stations. As I said earlier, the node itself looks great. It looks a thousand times better than the Alpha 1 node did, as it's filled with life as livestock wander around and NPCs are interacting with other NPCs in various activities, making it really feel that this city is bustling with people. They talk about how while this is one of the more basic node designs, we will also see things such as rivers flowing through the middle of nodes, or nodes pushed up against a body of water or a cliff facing, to really make each node feel unique. You may also notice if you have a keen eye that Steven was playing a tank with an updated ability kit compared to what we saw in the last preview. This is something that is more on par with the Cleric or Mage ability kit, and perhaps is a tease to what we'll be seeing next month, as Intrepid continues to make progress on these various class archetypes. While this node update had a lot to show us, whether you've been following the game for a long time or a new player just starting to catch up, it still shows us though that Ashes of Creation's development has a long road ahead for them. And if Intrepid is still planning to hit that Alpha 2 date sometime next year, we could really be seeing Alpha 2 run for quite some time after that point if these nodes are really still in the early stages of getting put together. What are your thoughts on the node showcase? Comment down below and if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create that account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can then jump in on the forums, buy some cosmetics, or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of Era. Otherwise, be sure to stay tuned for a lot more to come.